Welcome to day 256 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to cover Jeremiah 12 and 13. Then we're going to cover 1 Timothy chapter 4. So Jeremiah begins today by asking God a question. And I know this is a question I've wanted to ask before, and I'm sure that many of you listening have wanted to ask. And the question is, Lord, why are the wicked so prosperous? Why are they successful? And he says, why are evil people so happy? See, Jeremiah is in a position of persecution as he stands up for God and he warns the people about the coming judgment if they don't turn back to God. And we're told here many times that he's in a place of mourning. He has wept so many tears. He doesn't have any tears left to weep because he seems to be the only one that understands the severity of their disobedience to God. Now, God's answer to the question was, I have abandoned my people. I have surrendered them to their enemies. And I think what God is saying is that it's very much a false, prosperous time. It's a false happiness. See, we know, and we've talked about this before, we've seen this in Scripture, that Satan and his evil angels, they rule the earth. They have control over many things. And Satan makes false promises to anyone who will turn away from God. He makes false promises to anyone who will follow him or one of his false gods. Now, basically, anyone who is not following God is following Satan. There's no gray area. You're either following God or you're following Satan. Now, Satan may come in different names, like Baal for these people. But it's simple. It's either God or it's Satan. So when we say a false God, we're essentially saying they've turned away from God to Satan. For those that follow Satan, he makes bad things look good. Many of us have experienced that in our lives before. Things like sexual sin or lying or cheating people. Many, many bad things that God's people were doing in this time. Satan tries to make it look good. He makes it look satisfying and it is temporarily satisfying. The people doing these things seem to be prospering. And we can see so much evil in our world today. And we look at those people and it looks like they're the ones getting rich. They're the ones prospering. And just like in this time that Jeremiah is talking, we have this today. They seem to be the happy ones. But here's the kicker and here's the important thing. What Satan offers never lasts. It's a false prosperity. It's a false happiness. It's a momentary satisfaction to lure you into something deeper that ends up being the opposite of prosperous. It ends up being the opposite of happiness. It leads to destruction. It leads to places of depression and hopelessness. And God is telling Jeremiah here that it may look like they're prosperous, it may look like they're happy, but true prosperity, true happiness can only come from God. And God is saying, I've abandoned these people. These are people that look prosperous and happy to you. It's momentary. I've abandoned these people. They're about to get handed over to the Babylonians where all that false prosperity and false happiness is going to vanish in a moment, instantly. So guys, in our lives, when we see evil people being prosperous, seeming very happy while we're struggling as believers, while we're persevering persecution, do not get discouraged. Don't get discouraged, guys. It's a false prosperity and a false happiness they're experiencing. God says, don't get worn out racing against men. How will you race against horses later? In other words, wicked people will be punished for what they do. They may seem to be happy and fulfilled, but it's all momentary. It's fleeting. But believers and obeyers of Jesus will run a better race. We'll run a faster race in the long run. We will be stronger. We will be stronger like horses versus men. We learn to find joy and happiness in all circumstances, good or bad. Remember, we haven't gotten to James yet, but we we reference this often. James said we find our joy in difficult times. That's when our faith grows. That's when our endurance grows. Remember that we just learned from Paul that he says, I've learned to be content with much and with little in every situation. I've learned to be content because I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. The question is, do you you want to run with men 
or do you want to run with horses? Do you want to run with men and have this momentary happiness and prosperity? Or do you want to continue training through your perseverance to build up stronger muscles and run with horses? Do you see the analogy there? I want to run with horses. And I hope you do too. So don't let Satan's false happiness to those around you who aren't believers or those who say they believe but their actions don't show it. Don't let their false happiness make you think you're missing out on something. They will get their reward, and it will not be good. And you will get your reward, which is eternally good. I'm going to say that again. They will get their reward. Their false happiness, their false prosperity, they will get a reward, and it won't be good. But you persevering, you'll get a reward too, and it's eternally good. So next, in Jeremiah, we get a warning about pride. God's people had so much pride It kept them from seeing how disobedient they had become. He says, don't be arrogant. Give glory to the Lord your God before it's too late. See, there's a gem hidden right here in this simple statement. If you give glory to God for everything, it will keep you from failing to pride and arrogance. If someone comes up to you and basically says, good job for anything you do, give glory to God. If someone comes up to me and says, Jason, that was a good sermon, my response should be, thank God, because he put those words in my mouth, those thoughts in my head. If someone comes up and says, Jason, good job on the daily encouragement, my response should be, I give glory to God, thank God, because it was his idea to do these daily, and he's the one that gives it to me every day. If someone says, you're such a good servant, or you're really good at doing this or that, our response should be, thank God, I give glory to God, because he gave me my servant's heart. He gave me that opportunity. He gave me that talent. See, the point is if we keep our attention focused on giving glory to God, we're pointing everything back to God. It takes the attention off how great we are. How great is God that he gave us something? How great is God that he put us in a situation? How great is God that he gave us a talent? So if we keep our focus on giving glory to God, it takes the attention off how great we are, how talented we are. Because if we focus on how talented we are, that leads to pride. So we have a simple formula. We've got so many simple formulas in Scripture, and I love this one. This one to deal with pride. Simple formula to deal with pride. Just give glory to God. But here's the deal. Here's the flip side. We have a great warning if we don't give glory to God. And that warning is terrible darkness. So today we learn from Jeremiah that we need our hearts and our thoughts and our actions focused on God, no matter how much it seems that the evil people around us are doing better than us. No matter how much it seems they're happy, that's momentary. We need to keep our focus, our thoughts, our hearts, our actions focused on God. And we learn that we need to always give glory to God for everything to help remove our pride, to keep us from pride. Remember, This is a key point. Jeremiah is questioning the prosperity of the evil people. But Jeremiah didn't see the full outcome. We know the outcome. We're looking backwards. And guess what, guys? He got a book in the Bible to lead us and guide us. While all those people that look prosperous in that moment, look happy in that moment, they got death and destruction and became an ultimate example of what not to do. I want you to think about that. Jeremiah is saying, why do these people get to be prosperous and happy But yet Jeremiah gets to be one of the books of the Bible, a well-respected name and prophet whose name will live out through eternity because Scripture is eternal. And these people got the death and destruction and gave us an example of what not to do. Jeremiah says, Your name, Lord, is on their lips, but you are far from their hearts. But you know my heart, Lord. You know my thoughts. So let's make sure that we follow Jeremiah's example, not those other people. Let's make sure that our lips speak the name of Jesus, yes, and make sure our hearts and thoughts reflect the name of Jesus. Now we're going to transition over to 1 Timothy. And Paul starts off today by giving us a warning about false teachers. And it seems like we've gotten this warning a lot lately either in the daily encouragements or the scriptures that God has given us for sermons at our church, we've gotten this theme of false teachers a lot lately. 
Paul says the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that some will turn away from the true faith in the last days, the last times. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Many Christians don't want to talk about this stuff. He says they will follow deceptive spirits. They will follow teachings that come or they will teach stuff that comes from demons. And I think there's a reality in our world. Many Christians will follow whatever their preacher or spiritual leader says, often without testing the spirit to see, is this the Holy Spirit or a deceptive spirit? And they will do it without testing to see if it lines up with Scripture. So I'm going to give you an example. I just used this example this past Sunday in a sermon. We haven't posted that yet, so if you weren't there, you wouldn't have heard. You haven't heard this yet. Um, if you were there, sorry, you're hearing it twice. I just used this example of a ser- of a pastor, and he's a pastor of a mega church, roughly thirty or thirty plus thousand a week go. And he said that we can unhitch the Old Testament as believers. As believers in Jesus, we can do away with the Old Testament. We don't need it. This is false teaching. And I'm going to give you some scriptures to back it up. Now, I'm jumping ahead a few days when I do this because we'll cover a scripture in 2 Timothy just in a few days where Paul says that all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, correct us, prepare us. We hear that scripture We've known that scripture before. As Christians, we hear it, and we may think that he's talking about the Old and New Testament. Okay? But let's face a reality. When Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, there was no New Testament. When Jesus talked to the disciples about scripture, there was no New Testament. The very letter that Paul was writing to Timothy would become scripture and becomes useful to help us today. But there is a reality that all they had during the time of Jesus, during the time that Paul walked this earth, all they had was the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, of the Old Testament as we know it. And they had the scrolls of the prophets, the things that we're reading like Jeremiah and Isaiah. They didn't have the Gospels. They didn't have Acts. They didn't have Romans, etc. In fact, they were, living, they were living out Acts at that time. When Paul is talking to Timothy, he's actually living out what gets written about him in Acts. Also, Paul says to Timothy just before that scripture to remain faithful to what he's been taught in the Holy Scriptures. So he's telling him, remain faithful to what you've been taught in what we would call the Old Testament. Because that's what gave you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus. So Paul's telling Timothy... That what we call the Old Testament is actually what gives the wisdom we need to know we need Jesus. So this makes the man who said we should unhitch the Old Testament a false teacher. Because it goes against what Paul says in the New Testament. Side note. Now you know why I spend so much time each day on the Old Testament scripture of our daily daily encouragements. Now I can give you many Many more false teachings. Christians are taught often not to judge. Paul says that Christians, the church, is supposed to judge the church. Jesus says, judge only if you want to be judged back. Jesus didn't say, don't judge. He said, don't judge unless you want to be judged back. I could go on and on. We are taught so many false things. False teaching is all around us, so it's no wonder that Paul's warning Timothy and us about it. And he says these people are hypocrites and liars. Now, Paul says, Timothy, teach the truth of Scripture, the truth of Jesus. Train yourself to be godly. He says, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Guys, we've got to train. Not just show up. Not just show up for church. We've got to train. We've got to learn. We've got to teach others. American Christianity, in large part, has turned into show up. Show up for what you get out of it for a few hours. Yeah, you give up a little bit of your time, but what are you getting fed? What are you getting out of it? And then you go about your life. And no wonder we are so easily in our society misled by false teachers. Paul says train every day to be godly and then teach others. And he tells Timothy here, don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. So we got a lot of young people in this world And they're ready to come out and teach the world. And many adults push them down because they're not old enough. That is against scripture. That's a false teaching. 
Because Timothy, he tells Timothy here, don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. In other words, it doesn't matter how old you are. Train and teach. Train and teach. Young and old, train and teach. Be an example to all believers. He says, be an example to all believers in what you say. So our lives should be a living example, Paul is saying. Be an example to all believers in what you say, the way you live, the way you love, in your faith and in your purity. So what he's saying is you can't just show up and do this once a week. This is a daily, every second, every minute thing. So not only train, not only teach, but be a living example of what you teach so that you're not a hypocrite. See, we might say practice what you preach. So guys, if someone is teaching something that doesn't line up with Scripture, get away from them. They're actually being deceived by a demon. And they want to take you down with them. Train daily. Learn. Teach it. Live it out. Practice what you preach. See, this message really from 1 Timothy just echoes what we learn in Jeremiah. Jeremiah says that our hearts and thoughts and actions should always be focused on God. Doesn't that sound a lot like what Paul's telling Timothy? Not just our mouths saying we are. Practice what you preach. So guys, don't fall into the temptation presented by evil people for false prosperity and false happiness. Always give glory to God for everything and patiently endure and find true joy as you live out this life that Paul tells us to leave. That you live out this life of where you're teaching others what you are learning. I hope you're encouraged today and I hope you have a great day.